I don't know if this would be a glitch, but I sure as hell don't have any other way to describe how or why this happened. My best friend and I are driving down this windy road in our town that has a speed limit of 45 miles per hour. We have the windows down, the music up, and we're just talking and laughing, all the usual things. I believe we were on our way to a mutual friend's birthday party. On this one specific part of the road, there's a relatively sharp turn that bends around a guardrail. If you were to drive through the guardrail, you would plummet a great distance before hitting the shallow river below. Mind you, I have been on this road countless times, and I have never been paranoid or imagined anything specific about this turn. It was just one of many places on this particular road that you had to slow down a good bit before continuing your way around. Nothing major. We start to approach the turn, and while in the middle of a discussion about some drama going on at the party we were on our way to, we both grab the sides of the seats, her one hand remaining on the steering wheel. At the exact same time, in the middle of a conversation that had nothing to do with the road. We weren't speeding, there were no cars around us at all. It was just a peaceful drive, not unlike any we've had previously or since. We glanced at each other with big eyes and pulled onto the side of the road after making it around the turn. After stopping, we immediately bring up the exact thing that we both pictured in our heads at the same exact time. She loses control of the wheel, which results in us smashing the guardrail and plummeting over the edge directly into the water. We both felt the same sensation of not being able to breathe correctly until we pulled the car onto the side of the road. And we felt a tingling sensation in the back of our head, a weird buzz in our ears. We both experienced the same exact thing at the same exact time, never happened to us before or since. It was, to say the least, extremely bizarre. I don't think I'll ever be able to make any sense of this experience, and I was on edge the entire night after this. I would love to hear any ideas on how or why this occurred. Let me preface this story by saying that when this happened to me, I, a 33-year-old male, was barely 16 and was as much of a skeptic or a believer as any kid at that age could be. I'd had other unexplained incidents before this, but this is the one that really stuck with me most of all. I went to bed in my very boring, very normal mid-2000s bedroom. I played a little Nintendo DS, later than I should have on a school night, I'll admit, then slept for maybe an hour or two before waking up in desperate need to use the bathroom. I roll out of bed, not bothering to grab my glasses, my first mistake, as someone who's literally legally blind without them probably should get them, and I take the muscle memory four steps diagonally across my tiled bedroom floor. I am a very tactile person due to my visual impairment, and I had my whole house, not only my room, memorized to a T for safety. I reached for my doorknob, and I get nothing. Okay, so maybe I'm not quite as awake as I thought. This never happens to me though. I wake up if one of my parents so much as breathes wrong across the damn house, but okay, I guess I'm groggy. I reach to the left since I must have angled my walk wrong. Nothing. I try right. Nothing. Did I not walk far enough? I feel really awake now. I take another step, regretting the no glasses choice. I can barely make out shapes in the daytime, and darkness is just a blanket over my eyes, so I can't see my door, or my bed, or my own hands in front of me. I can't see, period. But the door should be there. So where is it? 
I take another step. Two, three, four. I flail my arms forward, silently pleading, please let my door be there. And I swear I can see the nightlight in the hallway that's there so that I won't eat carpet on my way to the bathroom. Thanks, Mom. But no matter where I reach or how far I go, I can't get close enough. My memory gets hazy here, but after maybe two solid minutes of aimless walking toward the hazy outline of light around a door, my last thought from that between time was feeling that I was not at home. Then I'm in the hallway and I sleep on the couch the rest of the night. Looking into my room felt like staring into an abyss. Nothing ever came of it, but I don't know if anything will ever get under my skin the way this did. I felt so unsafe, so helpless and alien in that space that I had known so well. Wherever it was, it was not my room. Several months ago, I lost the last pair of glasses I had. I remember the last place that I had them, which was my friend's car, on my knee. I have to take them off in order to see my phone. I couldn't find them after I got home. I tore my house upside down looking for them. I even looked in the driveway, thinking that maybe I still had them on my knee when I got out of my car. I called my friend to look in his car but nothing. They had just vanished. Fast forward to last week, my husband and I do yard work for an elderly man, and we haven't been to his place to work in close to a year. He was out of state during that time, dealing with trying to sell a house out there. Anyway, we went to do his yard work last week, and my husband was taking and pulling weeds in one of the flower beds. He yells for me to come and take a look at something. I get to where he is and he's holding in his hands my glasses. He had just uncovered them buried in a flower bed. There's no possible way for them to have gotten there, much less to be buried under the dirt. I've been so shook over this and I would love to hear any ideas on how this could have happened. We're pretty sure it's some kind of glitch in the matrix, but dang, it was super weird. The last hour of my life has been really surreal for me. So I got off work just a little while ago and I ended up on Instagram, just kind of browsing the reels. I do this every now and then just for filler and it almost felt like my hands were just leading the way. Well, I ended up on this video of some girl and I liked her style, so I went to her page. I was just watching a few of her videos. For whatever reason, because I never do this, I clicked the comments, and I ended up clicking on the first commenter's profile. As soon as I do, I see the pictures of this person. I look up at the name. This profile belongs to a long lost friend of mine that I went to elementary school with. I went to school in a very small town. My sixth grade class had fewer than 10 students. I haven't used Facebook in over six years, and even my Instagram doesn't have my real name attached to it. But when I found their profile, I instantly added them and sent them a message. We had no mutual friends, and they actually lived in another state, and had for the last 10 years or so. We messaged back and forth, and I found out that they had been having a hard time recently, but that they were trying to stay positive. I also found out that we both had similar outlooks, and we agreed that we were supposed to find each other again. I plan on calling them again this weekend to catch up more thoroughly, but holy crap, what a beautiful thing. Still, it seems like more than a coincidence. I don't know if it's a glitch in the matrix or something like that, but it was wild.
When I was in my 20s, my then wife and I were standing outside a bakery waiting for it to open. There was also a family behind us in line, a father, a mother, a young boy, and a girl who was a little older. I remember the little boy because I thought it was odd that he was playing on the rounded metal railings on the opposite side of us, just climbing and hanging off of it like little kids do. The boy had brown hair and an oversized winter coat on. Nothing was said between my wife and I, and when the bakery opened, we went in, and so did the family. Except there was no boy. I figured he was roaming an aisle or something, like kids do. So we check out and so does the family, but still, no boy in sight. We walk out and get into the car and notice the family leaving with just the daughter. I wasn't really thinking too much about it, until my wife says to me, Where's the little boy? That's when I was a little shocked. We discussed the boy and what he looked like and how he was dressed, and we also talked about what he was doing on the railings while we waited. But there wasn't a boy anymore. This is a little bakery off a highway with no other stores around and no houses. The parking lot is also small and in plain view of the only entrance and exit door. We were both a little spooked, and we're not entirely sure if it was a ghost or some kind of glitch in the matrix. Like, maybe we were seeing two different timelines or a parallel universe or something. But in any case, that boy just glitched out of existence. My husband wrote his perspective about me shifting realities after some grocery store incident with my daughter. I wanted to share the story from my point of view. I was in the grocery store with my daughter doing some shopping. We were down the canned chili aisle. While walking by the chili to the left, I mentioned to my daughter that it was too bad that no one in the house liked chili dogs. She replied with, yuck mom, hot dogs are gross. I said, okay, well, we do need some canned corn. So I looked above the aisle to read the signs above all the aisles that I could see, and I noticed the canned vegetables were on the next aisle to the right. So we walked, got to the end of the aisle and turned right. Before we turned the corner to the aisle on the right, I looked down it and saw the chili to the left. I stopped and said to my daughter, hey, weren't we just down the chili aisle? My daughter said, Whoa, mom, we were. But now we're standing outside the two aisles looking back and forth between both of them. I looked to the one on the right, the one that we had just been down, and I saw baking goods like flour and stuff like that. We both kind of tripped out a little and laughed about it, chalking it up to just being confused. I'm open-minded, but this definitely couldn't be possible. We wrapped up our shopping and came home. Fast forward to dinner time, minus a few details. The long story short is that I noticed my son's features looking slightly different to me. I kept saying how he just looked slightly older. Kind of like when you send your kid to camp for a week and when you see them, you notice how they aged just a wee bit from the last time you saw them. I asked my husband if he thought it was possible for a person to notice the moment of the slightest change of aging in a child. We're pretty open-minded in our house and we like to entertain conversations that don't always fall in line with society's standards. It's fun and we like to think for ourselves. At some point, a while later, my daughter said, hey, mom, tell them about what happened at the store. I told the story and my husband, being his lovable weird self said, I think you experienced a glitch in the matrix. Maybe my old wife is gone and that's why our son looks different. I laughed it off because I always like to see the rational side of things and also thought he was mostly joking. So he posted about it. I have no idea what really happened at that store. Had my daughter not been there to experience it with me, I might actually believe that I in fact do have some kind of mental illness, like so many of the commenters seem to think. I'm also a firm believer that that's how most of society is brainwashed to think. Oh, this is weird, someone's losing their mind, give them meds. Over the past five years, I've been on a journey of loosening the grip that society's conditioning has had on me and trying to unlearn most of the things from my upbringings. 
I'm trying to learn to think for myself and also to realize that my life may not be what it seems to the next person. Perception is everything and experiences are different depending on who's experiencing them and how they vary. I'm not saying that I shifted realities. I'm also not saying that I'm insane. There is no black and white. There's only what I experienced and nobody will see things the way I do. Maybe I will never truly know what happened and that's part of life. Nothing has to have an answer. Not every situation out of the cookie cutter life experience has to be labeled as crazy. My challenge to all the skeptics ready to deem me insane is that nothing is what it seems. Have an open mind. The next time you judge a person based on a story, try to think of all the times someone was trying to judge you based on a situation that you saw completely differently. Does that make you insane? Like I said, I would definitely have seen a doctor had it not been for the fact that my daughter and I experienced the exact same thing. Anyway, that's my perspective of what happened that day. I may never be able to explain it, and that's okay. My wife and daughter had the same glitch experience at the grocery store earlier today. She said that she and my daughter were walking, looking at something in an aisle. They were looking for something and they thought they were on the right aisle, but then they realized it was over in the next aisle. So they turned the corner and started walking down that one, but realized that they were actually on the aisle they had just left from the beginning. Not like they had turned around, but like they had made a full circle even though they hadn't. They noticed right away, so they turned around to check the aisle they had just left to confirm what had happened, and it was a completely different aisle they'd never even been on. After that, we were eating lunch. She looked over at our son and said that he just looked different, as though he had aged since she'd seen him last. This change that she has noticed in our son only seemed to happen after this weird glitch. Is it possible that my wife just shifted realities? If so, what happened to my original wife? She seems exactly the same. We can't really figure out what just happened. I just got home from work an hour ago. I have these dreams every night where this Japanese girl is always riding shotgun in my dream car, which is a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. The dreams have been getting a little too realistic for my taste. For example, she has a whole name, first, middle, and last. Either way, the dreams almost always consist of she and I just driving around and laughing at some dumb jokes. Well, tonight on my way home, I decided to glance over to the passenger side mirror and she's just sitting there. Same hair, same clothes. It was her. I'm not sure why, but I wasn't really unnerved by it in any way. That is, until she looked over to me and smiled. I smiled back and she was gone. Poof, she just vanished as if she was never there. Hell, the seatbelt was even undone. I'm honestly not sure how to feel about this. I'm guessing that in another reality or universe, I'm dating the girl of my dreams, and maybe there was some kind of overlap. I guess dreams could be realities. Maybe they're alternate realities. But could there be an actual meaning behind all of this? I still can't figure it out. What's even weirder is that I did some Googling about her name and I can't find anybody that exists with those names put together, first, middle, and last. I have no idea what's going on. Approximately five years ago, 
One of my coworkers, an 18 year old woman at my job, didn't show up for her shift one day. The next time we worked together, I asked why she had called out the other day. We just so happened to be in the presence of one of our supervisors and we were all standing close to the entrance. She told us that her house had flooded because her younger brother left the faucet running right before her family went out to dinner. They came back to the house being mildly flooded. Unfortunate, but not too crazy of a story. The next day at work, the same coworker and same supervisor were standing in the exact same spot as the day prior, close to the entrance and were talking. I asked my coworker how her house and family were doing. She asked me what I was talking about and why I would ask her that. I said, you know, because of your house flooding. She became very visibly upset and bothered and demanded to know how I knew that her house had flooded. I became very confused. I asked her, don't you remember telling me that literally just yesterday? She insisted that she didn't tell me about her house flooding and demanded to know how I found out this information. I was bewildered and I was convinced she must be messing with me because she 100% told me and our supervisor about her house flooding. I turned to our supervisor and I'm like, did she not tell us about her house flooding yesterday? Expecting an obvious yes in response. However, our supervisor said she had no idea that her house had flooded either and it was the first time she was hearing about it. I was stunned almost into silence and I'm incoherently babbling, trying to explain that she definitely did tell us this. My coworker cuts me off and says, there's absolutely no way you could have known about that. I haven't told anyone about my house flooding aside from our general manager, not even, and inserted the name of another coworker who she was really close with. She said, if I haven't even told her about that, why the F would I tell you? She literally looked at me with disgust and stormed off. At this point, I'm still convinced that it was some kind of elaborate prank. I asked the supervisor who had witnessed it before about the whole thing again, and she still maintained that she was unaware about her house flooding. This disturbed me greatly, but it's just so freaking insane that I was still convinced they had to be messing with me. The next time I worked with flooded house coworker, I said hello to her and she just glared at me in response and walked off. After that day, it was never the same. We worked together for another six months or so and she continued to avoid me. If we had to interact, she was rude to me and treated me like I was some kind of creepy stalker that was obsessed with her. I swear on my life that she told me about her house flooding I remember it very vividly, but her reaction to me knowing was so intense and so prolonged, I really don't think she was faking that. My supervisor also maintained that she never actually told us about it. I even talked to her best friend about it, who also said that she had not previously known about the house flooding. Her best friend told me that it was best to just leave the topic alone and to leave flooded house girl alone. I have no explanation for this. And when I tell people about the situation, they either tell me I'm crazy or making it up. I don't know how to explain it. I don't even believe in parallel universes, but I don't know what else it could be other than a switch up in the timelines or something. I don't know. It haunts me though. I think about it all the time and it just makes me feel sick. This happened when I was 16. My mother used to take my phone at night and then give it back to me when she woke me up for school the following morning. Every morning started the same. She would wake me up, I would go to the bathroom to take a shower and get ready, I'd come out and put on my uniform, she'd give me breakfast, and then I would run out of the house to catch the public bus. This is the important part. I would always take my phone into the bathroom with me. I'm the type of person who plans my day by the minutes. 
I knew I had to take my shower for X amount of minutes, get out of the bathroom by X, leave the house at X, etc. So the same routine. I was in the bathroom and I remember it so clearly. My shower took way longer than usual. And instead of it being 7.15 when I got out, the phone said 7.23. I remember rushing out of the bathroom as I was supposed to leave the house by 7.25 on most days. I rushed and put on my uniform and my mom followed me half out of the house with my breakfast. I distinctly remember checking the clock before I left too, trying to figure out if I had time to catch the bus or if I would have to take a car to school. The clock was at 7.28, so I did have time to catch the bus. It was a snowy day in January. I also remember that vividly. The sky was gray and dark, but that's how it was every day. The streets were eerily empty. I stood at my bus stop, which was on the side of a pretty busy street. Not today. No one was on the street. Maybe one car passed by every few minutes. I started to get worried that I would be late for school. And that's when I looked down at my phone to call my dad to see if he could drop me off. It was 4.03 in the morning. I was shocked. It couldn't be. I walked back home and my mom was still up getting my other sister ready for school. She was surprised to see me. I told her to check the time and to her surprise too, it was four o'clock in the morning. She started saying how she had sworn that her alarm woke her up at seven, like it does every single morning. We both looked at each other and just swore that we'd seen the time. A 4 a.m. snowy day and a 7 a.m. snowy day looked almost identical outside, but I know that I checked the clock enough times to confirm that it was in the seven o'clock hour. Regardless, we all went back to sleep and again I woke up at seven. This time I made my dad take me to school and the whole day I had my eyes on the clock. This incident never happened to me again, but I still have no explanation for it. A couple of years ago, I experienced a moment straight out of the Truman Show. I was skiing on Whistler Mountain with my family. I'm a fast skier, so I usually will zip down the mountain and then wait for my dad to catch up with my phone in hand in case he needs to reach me. One run, I stopped about halfway down the mountain to wait for him to catch up and received a phone call from my dad. When I picked up, he didn't answer. Instead, I heard what sounded like radio chatter. I couldn't make out exactly what was being said, except for one thing. We lost him. Wait, wait, he stopped by the tree. Then the line went dead and my dad came skiing down. Not only was he not on his phone, but his phone was dead. I told my family about this and even had the phone call record in my recent phone calls as evidence that I had at least received a call when I claimed I did. What was especially strange is that my younger brother had a memory of the event as well. He said that I had skied to the bottom of the mountain where he was eating lunch and that I had received the call in front of him, but I didn't. He also told me the next morning that he had a nightmare that men in suits were standing all around his bed telling him to forget what he had seen and that, quote, he could never know the truth, he being me. He could have easily been messing with me, sure, but he seemed really shaken up at the time, like genuinely scared, and he's still fascinated by the events whenever I bring them up today. When this happened, it completely shattered my worldview about reality. I still find myself questioning what's real, it was a very strange event. I feel like I was never supposed to experience it. Like I said, it eerily reminds me of that scene in the Truman Show where his car radio is playing security radio chatter of them following him. I don't know what to make of it, but it was really, really strange.
About 25 years ago, I lived in Texas. Most of my family lived in Utah. My sister called me one afternoon and told me that my niece and her three-year-old daughter were in an accident, but had to be in two different hospitals. The three-year-old, Court, was at a children's hospital. You have to remember, there were no cell phones back then. My sister told me that they were fixing to do surgery on Court for a blood lump behind her eye. My sis was with her as her mom was having surgery at the other hospital. My sis asked me to pray for them both. I was laying on my bed praying, but when I prayed for Court, it felt like I was in her room, and I put my hand on her head while I prayed for her. Jump forward two years, and my family went to Utah for a family reunion. One of the days that I was there, my sister asked if I wanted to see pictures of Court in the hospital, and I did. The sister said that a weird thing happened. Court was sleeping, so sister went to get snacks out of the machine. When she got back to the room, Court was awake. Remember, she was only three. Court asked my sister where Aunt Deb was. That'd be me. She said that I was in Texas. Court said, no, she was in here. She put her hand on my head and she was talking. So, yeah, I guess I really was with her. I don't know if that's some sort of glitch in the matrix sort of thing, but it certainly was memorable. So I always thought this was strange. I even told people about it, but chalked it up to people working overnight or something. But now, I'm not so sure. I worked for one of the biggest tech companies for about 10 years. I traveled a lot and sometimes taught workshops. I remember visiting Puerto Rico to deliver a workshop. I was really impressed with the people in the office. They were serving lunch on silver dishes and had a really classy atmosphere. It was a company location, so there were no customers in the office. One strange thing that happened, but not necessarily weird, was after eating lunch with the students, I'd started teaching again. And little by little, the office people would just casually walk in, right past the projector and me lecturing and grab lunch. I wasn't mad, I actually found it kind of funny. Besides, the staff had some good looking and generally nice people, so there's that too. The strange part was that I remember after one class cleaning up for the night and visiting the bathroom before leaving, and I noticed that it was a bit aged. Maybe leaking faucets and water stains, nothing gross, but it was definitely an old bathroom. There were several stalls and urinals. Now, I left likely at around five o'clock and the office was closing down. The next day when I visited that bathroom, it was completely different and looked brand spanking new. I'm talking marble, tile, everything looked like it had literally been done overnight. I remember mentioning this and really getting no response from anybody. That night was when the oil refinery blew up. I booked my flight a day early and got out. I was afraid that it was either an attack or the smoke would force the airport to be closed down, which would cause havoc with me trying to get home. I never did figure out what was going on there with that bathroom or with the people. Looking back on it, maybe they weren't real either, or maybe it was some kind of glitch. I've mentioned this a few times to people over the years as a funny story, thinking that they had actually remodeled this bathroom overnight. But now that I think of it, there's no possible way that they did that. I was leaving when the office was getting ready to close. There were no signs, no workers coming in, and no recollection of the employees the next day. Plus, this work wasn't just a makeover. Like I said, it was granite counters, tile walls, the works. It was just very strange. This happened yesterday and I can't stop thinking about it. My boyfriend wasn't home and I had put my phone on charge behind the couch. I sat down and started reading. About 10 minutes later, 
I heard my boyfriend shout, baby, and I sat up startled. He sometimes does this when he comes home just to make me aware of his presence before he comes into the room because I always jump if I don't hear him come in. I sat for a second because I couldn't hear any movement, then turned around to get off the couch and go see him and see what he was doing. As I got up, my phone lit up and it was a text message from him, literally just a few seconds after I'd heard him call me. I thought nothing of it until I opened the living room door and he wasn't standing in the hallway. I checked my phone and he'd actually texted me something pretty urgent and it made me even more freaked out that I had heard him shout so clearly. It felt like in some weird way, whatever it was was trying to get my attention to turn around and get my phone. This is a glitch that I have thought about a lot over the years. I have no explanation. It was just a weird thing that happened. It was 2011 and we were 16. My best friend and I were in town, wanting to get some McDonald's. Her car declined, so we were walking to the bank opposite the mall. While we were crossing the road, we saw her older brother's best friend, Mark. We both yelled out, hello, Mark. I yelled out, nice shirt. It was a lion with flames all around it. I remember very well because I had a huge crush on him at the time. He ignored us completely, like he didn't even hear us. We both commented about how rude that was, finished crossing the road and got to the ATM on the other side. While there, Mark comes along from the opposite direction. He's wearing the same shirt and we asked him how he got there, that we had just seen him cross the road and the light hadn't gone again, so he couldn't have crossed again. He's very confused and said that he just came from the opposite direction and had never crossed the road yet. I mentioned this to my best friend a week ago and she remembers the same thing that I do. Neither of us have any idea what happened. Years ago, I was working nights as a phlebotomist, the person who draws your blood, in a hospital. There was this doctor who was notorious for ordering recurrent tests incorrectly. He would order a single draw when he really needed a serial draw 90% of the time. But because one in 10 times he really did want a single, you always had to check with him. This night happened to be the start of daylight savings. So at 1.59 a.m., the clocks would turn to 3 a.m. instead of 2. At about 1.30, I get an order on my screen from this doctor. I was the only phleb on nights and I worked with two techs. I sighed and showed them. Oh look, Dr. X ordered this test again. I'll see if he's on the floor and if he really wants this or if he wants the serial draw. I went up to the floor and he was at the nurse's station. I remember it so clearly because he was wearing plaid black and yellow skinny pants under his white coat. I couldn't stand the guy and I thought his loud, ugly pants just drew attention to his loud, ugly personality. I walked up to him and said, hey, I just got this order for XYZ patient. Did you mean to order the three serial draws? He was dismissive and said something like, of course I did, can you just draw three? I, of course, cannot just come poke a patient three different times without orders. So I asked him if he could reorder it and I would go back to the lab to print the stickers and come right back and do the first draw. I drew a couple of patients quickly knowing that he would take a few minutes to get the order in. I rode the elevator back to the lab and checked my computer. It was 1.58 and the orders were there so I printed them and stuck my specimens in the centrifuge while they printed. I pulled the labels off the printer and looked closely and realized that he had ordered the single draw yet again. 
I pulled up the order code, wrote it down for him, and went back to the floor to just ask him to do this order exactly. When I got to the floor, he was standing exactly where he had been when I came up the first time, wearing plain black pants. I assumed somebody had forced him to change, and I knew he was going to be really annoyed when I asked him to reorder the labs. By now, it was definitely past 1.59, so the clocks were reading three-something. I asked him if he could reorder the test. He was totally pleasant and not at all frustrated that I was asking him again. I asked him if room 2008 had thrown up on him or something, and if that's why he had changed his clothes. He then seemed offended and was like, what are you talking about? I was like, sorry to offend, but when I came up to you earlier, you had on yellow pants, so I just assumed something happened. He scoffed at me and said, I've been wearing these all night. I don't own yellow pants. You must be confused. I'm thinking he's just being weird and should just admit he got puked on, but whatever. I go back to the lab, print the orders, and finally draw the patient. I stop to talk to one of the nurses for a moment, and on my way back down, she says something like, I saw you talking to Dr. X. He's being weird tonight, right? And she seemed kind of shaken. I said, yeah, he was wearing those hideous pants and then tried to pretend he wasn't. She told me that he walked into a room on one side of the wing wearing the yellow pants right before the time change, and then walked out seconds later from the other side of the wing wearing black. I was weirded out and went back down to the lab where the techs asked me where the samples were for the patients that I had drawn after first asking Dr. X to reorder. I opened the centrifuge I had left them in and they weren't there. The orders showed that the labels had never been printed, and when I apologetically went to redraw the patients, they had no idea who I was and didn't have cotton or tape on their arm from where I'd drawn them earlier. I still have absolutely no explanation for this. It appears that everything between first receiving the incorrect order and returning to ask him to reorder for the second time never happened. The text didn't remember me showing them that he had ordered incorrectly the first time or anything. The only reason I didn't check into a psychiatric facility was the nurse who corroborated my story. We hardly knew each other at the time, but we like trauma bonded over the experience and we've talked about it so many times. The weirdest part to me is that it coincided with daylight saving starting. That is completely a societal construct Nothing actually happens when we move the clock, so what the heck? I still get the chills when I think or talk about it. And because people always question why I was so tuned into the clocks and to know exactly when things happened, I was a worker whose shift was an hour shorter that night. We all kind of watch the clock and do a mini celebration when it changes. This isn't exactly a horrifying story, so don't get too disappointed if you're not terrified. For background, I'm a 15-year-old Irish fella called Roths. I go to school in Ireland, and I'm now in third year. At the start of the second year, I knew a fella that joined the school. I was in charge of showing him around, and we've been good friends ever since. He is Portuguese, and his name is Tiago. I'll call him Tig for the story. His school bag is a fairly small, bright red bag. He's a little bit shorter than me, and his hair is quite short and brown in color. One day, I was upstairs in my school. It was break time, and I was going to my group's usual spot. I turned a corner, and I saw Tig walking along the hallway. This was weird, because at the distance I was from him, I would have seen him come up the stairs. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I sped up to catch up to him. There was another corner coming up. He rounded it and I followed suit, except he wasn't there. There was a staircase going back down and two bathrooms, one for lads and one for lassies, but no Tig. 
Considering how close behind him I was, he would have had to have sprinted towards and then jumped down the stairs or jogged into one of the bathrooms. If he went for the stairs, I would have heard it. So I figured he was in the bathroom. I sat at the bench and waited. Tig was the first other person in our group to arrive. He rounded the corner and sat his bag down. The realization hit me hard. He wasn't in the bathroom and whatever or whoever I had followed was not Tig, even though it looked just like him. Same backpack and everything. I asked him if he had already been up there, to which he replied he hadn't. He had no reason to lie. Now, I know what you're thinking. It was someone else. First of all, the person that I saw looked the exact same as my friend from the back. Second of all, no one else in the school has that bag. At least I've never seen anyone else with it. And third, the only place the person could have gone without sprinting down the stairs, which I probably would have caught a glimpse of anyway, would be the bathroom. No one ever came out of the bathroom. At least nobody that I didn't watch go into it. Finally, my friend is a fairly distinct character. Not many people have the same body build as he does. Like I said at the start, it's not exactly terrifying, but I do believe it to be a glitch in the Matrix. I am a 26-year-old female, and my boyfriend is a 26-year-old male. One day, we went for a big walk around the town that we were living in at the time. It was the middle of the day, probably around 2 p.m., and we were both completely sober. At one point, we were on the side of the road, on one of those lanes where people run and walk, and we saw a female child, around 12 years old if I had to guess, jogging. She was in our lane and coming our way. I remember finding it strange for this child to be out jogging on her own. There was no one else around, and it was a pretty remote area, like a countryside road but I didn't mention anything to my boyfriend. We were walking side by side, so I walked behind him so that she could pass. I stopped seeing her for a few seconds, but when I saw her again next to me, she was a fully grown woman in her mid-forties. He immediately looks at me before I can say anything, in total shock, and asks, did you see that? I asked him, did he also see a child turn into a woman? And he said, yeah. He said that she never really left his sight, but as he blinked and looked again, she was no longer a child. We even looked back to confirm and she was still the mid-40s woman. Since then, I've been noticing other, smaller glitches. I don't know if they were always there and I just didn't pay attention, or if that started a whole chain of events. Either way, it was odd. This wasn't anything mind-blowing, but it happened to me earlier today, and it made me so confused. I live in an apartment building, and the ground level is like a communal public space. I was taking the lift down from my apartment level to this ground level to exit the place in the morning. The lift doors have transparent panels, so you can look out of the lift. And because of how lifts usually slow down when they're reaching the destination floor, and the doors sometimes take a few seconds to open. I had a good 10 seconds to look at what was happening at the public space in the ground floor. From what I saw, there were three men mopping the floor and one old lady, who I know is my neighbor, was walking across the space in front of these three men. But when I was in the lift, I noticed that all four of them were frozen, but it was weird because they weren't just standing in casual positions. The men looked like they had just frozen as they were mopping, and the old lady was literally mid-stride. I spent a good three or four seconds wondering what was going on as I waited for the lift doors to open. But the moment the lift doors opened and I stepped out, everyone started moving. The men went back to mopping the floor, and the lady continued walking again. 
It was so odd though, because it literally looked as though somebody had pressed play on them when I stepped out of the lift. It was so weird to me. I have no idea what happened. This happened two years ago, sometime between September and November of 2019. My girlfriend, we'll call her Mary, and I drove up to Berkeley, California for the weekend, my hometown. I now live in Los Angeles. We went there to see some of my old friends. The day we arrived, we went straight to my oldest friend, we'll call him Paul's, dad's house, where my family spent every Christmas and Thanksgiving my whole childhood. His family is quite well off and has a large property at the top of Berkeley Hills with a full panoramic view of the Bay Area, Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco skyline, etc. It's a pretty breathtaking view. It was probably about three or four in the afternoon as the sun was starting to dip but not yet setting. The three of us were sitting on his deck in the backyard, catching up, about to get in the hot tub with this gorgeous view. Now, for the sake of what happens next, I feel like I should describe the seating arrangement. I was sitting on a bench perpendicular to the bay, with Mary sitting to my right. I was facing Paul, who was sitting on a bench perpendicular to mine. We were just telling stories, making jokes, and laughing quite a bit, when out of nowhere, a rapid black rip sped between where Paul and I were sitting, making a loud tearing sound and vanished from view as quickly as it had appeared. Initially, I thought I had hallucinated it, until realizing that Paul and Mary were equally stunned and shocked by what I had just seen. All of us were like, what the hell was that? And it became immediately clear that it was no hallucination, especially since we all quickly agreed on its description. Whatever it was, was long and black, I had thought for a moment that it was the largest bird I'd ever seen, but its speed was unlike anything I've ever witnessed. It was just rapid. We all looked in the direction that it seemed to be headed, but there was nothing where it should have been, despite being able to see for miles. It was present for what felt like a millisecond, blink and you'd have missed it. We discussed it, each of us as bewildered as the next, and agreed that maybe it was like a hole in a pair of jeans ripping wide open. We all decided that it felt like a rip had sped between us and closed as soon as it had opened. There was no follow-up or evidence of the phenomenon except for the certainty that we had all seen it happen. I don't know what this was and I've never had any similar experiences, but to this day, the three of us all remember it vividly. I don't know if it was a rip in the matrix or what, but I'd love to hear thoughts of what this could have been. Has anyone else ever had a similar experience? I had a dream about visiting my aunt-in-law's condo that was in Egypt when I was 25 years old. Now I am 29. In the dream, I was sitting on a white couch inside this nice condo, which you might as well call a huge apartment in America. At the time, I didn't even know that I was in Egypt. All I knew was that when you walked onto the porch, there was a desert in a huge city. I started walking around the condo and noticed a huge hole in one of the walls where you can see the elevator moving up and down. This somewhat freaked me out, but I started moving around the place. I looked around the floor. It had a pink marble floor, three bedrooms, a small kitchen, and a small wood floor over by the kitchen where the hole in the wall was. I woke up and started thinking how weird that dream was. Five years later, I find myself in Egypt, meeting my girlfriend's family, who's now my wife. The main reason I was there was because of a wedding, and we had other things to do for the wedding there as well. At least, that was the main reason for us being there. 
I was also there, as I said, to meet the rest of her family. On the last night of my being there, I walked into my aunt's place for the first time. I looked around and thought, this seems really familiar, but I didn't really know why. It came time to put my bags down and she took me to the room that I was going to sleep in. Then my wife went out to get her dress for the wedding. They left me in the condo, and as I'm walking around, I started to wonder about why everything looked so familiar. I remembered my dream as I was sitting on the couch, so I start running around and looking everywhere around the place. Everything was exactly the same, minus the hole in the wall where the elevator was. During this time, my new cousin walked in, saw me running around and looking very distressed, and he asked, what's wrong? I said, I had a dream about your mom's house three years ago. I thought it was my Aunt T's place, but it turns out it's your mom's place. It was really weird. I don't know how I saw that place without ever having seen it in real life first. For the past year or so, I have been noticing that things around me don't seem normal anymore. I continue to have this overwhelming sense that everything is fake in a way, or almost dreamlike. I've even kicked around the idea that I may have died already and I'm in some sort of purgatory. I recently took my family on a weekend getaway to Seattle. Being a couple hundred miles away from our home in Sela, Washington, it's an easy trip for my wife and I to manage with our two kids, 11 years old and 4 months old. Over the course of our weekend excursion, I experienced a few things that I found to be odd and left me feeling a bit uneasy. The first occurrence was trivial enough, but it sort of set the tone for the eeriness of the weekend. I was gazing out of the window of our hotel room on the 12th floor, sipping a cup of coffee, when I noticed a plastic bag drifting in the wind. I watched the bag dance around in the air as it slowly descended. A green dumpster 12 stories below me caught my eye, and I immediately thought, what if that bag floated all the way down there and landed in the dumpster? I stood at the window for five minutes or so watching this bag slowly float toward the ground, gliding left, right, back and forth. The more I watched the bag, the more confident I became that it would find its way into this dumpster, and it did. This bag that I noticed off in the distance drifted 12 stories and perfectly navigated its way into the dumpster below my building. Later that day, I was in the hotel lobby, approaching the elevator to head up to my room. In front of me, there was a man with two children, waiting for the elevator as well. The man had a guitar case strapped to his back, along with an amplifier and various other bags. His back was to me, and he had a hoodie on. For some reason, I thought to myself, what if that's Ed? Ed was a friend of mine that I hadn't seen in years. We used to work at an olive garden together in our younger days. We also played guitar together and did a fair amount of partying. Now here's the weird part. My wife thinks I'm crazy, but bear with me. The weird part was how confident I was that this guy was going to turn around and it would be Ed. The same confidence, almost certainty I would say, that I had had in the fact that the trash bag would fly into the dumpster. The elevator doors opened and this man and his two children walked inside. As the man turned around to enter the floor number on the elevator button console, it was Ed. We were both thrilled to see each other, and we even held the door open to chat for a moment, hindering other folks in the process. Even as this was all occurring though, I couldn't shake the feeling, this isn't real. It's a very difficult thing to describe, but things just don't feel real. Later that evening, my 11-year-old son and I were on the balcony outside of our hotel room. He was peering over the edge when he suddenly whimpered under his breath, that poor guy. 
When I asked him who and what he was talking about, he said, That bumblebee on the ground next to the dumpster, he's dead. We were on the 12th floor, like I mentioned earlier. There's no way that this kid could see a dead bumblebee on the ground floor. Not to mention that the alleged bee was laying next to the dumpster that was the manifested landing zone for the floating trash bag. We argued a bit over whether or not he could really see this bee when he finally convinced me to go down and take a look. As we made our way down to the street level, my thought process shifted. The same confidence that I had previously had regarding the trash bag and Ed had returned. Although I didn't mention it to my son, I became increasingly certain that the bee would be there. And well, it was. It was right there, right next to the green dumpster containing the trash sack. The next evening, I took the family to a place called Gameworks, which is similar to Dave and Buster's, or an adult version of Chuck E. Cheese. I placed our car keys, wallets, and other important things all into our diaper bag and backpack that we carried on into the establishment. We spent a couple of hours playing games before finally counting our tickets and claiming prizes at the prize booth. We pocketed the prizes and went down the block to the Cheesecake Factory for dinner. After being seated for a few moments, my wife realizes that I don't have the backpack on. The backpack containing all of our money, credit cards, car keys, not to mention food and supplies for our four-month-old baby. The bizarre thing is that I have no recollection of ever taking that bag off, but apparently I did because it was gone. But I could have sworn up and down that I never took it off. I immediately go into panic mode, leap up from the table, and take off toward the GameWorks establishment. I run inside and dart around frantically for about a minute or two, with the bag nowhere in sight. Finally, I calm down and focus. After breathing and focusing for a moment, I'm greeted with that same confidence that I mentioned before. I was confident that I would not leave that place without my bag. At that moment, a man approached me waving his arms in the air and calling me by my first name. He said, here, Cody, I've got your bag, man. Now get back to that cheesecake factory and enjoy your dinner. I was awestruck and definitely beside myself at that moment. I had no clue who this man was or how he knew my name or where I was eating dinner. I didn't even think to question him. I just reached out, grabbed the bag and left. This might seem coincidental to a lot of you, but these are just recent examples of how my life seems to unfold lately. Either I'm a walking conduit of coincidence or something larger is at play. My wife thinks I'm nuts, but things are definitely not the same as they used to be. I don't know exactly how or why, but they just aren't. Things just don't seem real, and I can't tell you why. The women in my family know things that we couldn't possibly know. Sometimes we know things that are literally impossible for us to know. The main three are me, my daughter, and my mom. It's not like a psychic thing. We can't control it. In my experience, it's like taking a test you studied really hard for, so you're very confident in your answer. My mom's thing is safety. She always knows when somebody is in danger, or is going to get hurt, or is going to need help. She has called me as something was happening before, to ask me if the exact thing that was happening had happened. My thing is people. I'm never wrong about people. And my daughter's thing is pregnancy. She can always tell when someone is pregnant. Here's an example from my mom. My parents got married at 19. I was born a year later. When they were 22, my mom was pregnant with my baby brother and my dad wanted to go to a concert. My mom said she didn't want him to because he was going to get hurt. 
My dad told her he'd be fine. She was probably just anxious because of me and being pregnant with my brother. And anyway, he wouldn't be out too late. Now at that age, my dad had a hot temper and a spotless driving record. She should have been worried about him getting in a fight or something, but no. She said she just knew that he was going to get in a wreck, but he insisted that it would be fine. She finally agreed, but she made him promise to wear his seatbelt. He did. On his way home from the concert, there was a long, empty, boring stretch of road. He was alone. He fell asleep going 70 miles per hour and wrecked into a tree. If he hadn't been wearing his seatbelt, which he often didn't, he would have died. My mom basically saved his life that night. My example, my sister became friends with this girl, and before I even met her, I didn't like her. My sister said that she was fun and happy and bubbly. She got mad at me because I said, look, she's going to overwhelm you really fast, and then when you tell her that you need a break, she's going to threaten to harm herself. She told me that that was ridiculous, that I was assuming things. I said, I'm not assuming, I'm telling you. I know that's what's going to happen. She said I was just jealous. Sure enough, two months later, my sister calls me absolutely losing it. She said, dude, how did you know that? How did you know that she would do that? She told this girl she needed some space. And the girl said, well, I'm just going to off myself then. No one wants to be around me. She didn't, and my sister no longer hangs out with her but my sister was really freaked out that I knew that. Finally, my daughter's example. I had a friend come over. She announced her pregnancy. My daughter was three years old. We congratulated her and hung out and talked for a while. When they left, my daughter said, Mama, why did Miss Taylor say that she's pregnant? Thinking she was wondering what pregnant meant, I said, Oh, because she has a baby in her belly. My daughter looked me dead in the eyes and said, No, Mama, she doesn't. The baby died. A few days later, my friend called me to tell me she had a miscarriage. Another friend came over to hang out. My daughter was four at this time. And my daughter said, What are you going to name your baby? This woman had been trying to have a baby for about three years at this point with no luck. She said, I'm not having a baby. My daughter said, Oh, yes, you are. There's a baby in your belly. She found out she was pregnant two weeks later. I don't know if this is some kind of glitch, like we have interdimensional knowledge or what, but it doesn't feel like a psychic thing. Like I said before, it's almost like we've studied for this or we know because we've been there. It's really hard to explain, but either way, it's definitely kind of strange and trippy. What do you think? So this just happened and I have an eerie and weird feeling that something is just not right. So first, let me explain the placement of my house. When you come in, there's a little hall, and in front of you, the bathroom. Then you go to the left and you have a small kitchen and then a door. Then it's my bedroom, but it's so big I turned it into a living room. And right next to my bedroom is my daughter's bedroom. Everything is in an L shape. I'm 24 years old, and I live alone with my daughter, who's two years old, and our two pet bunnies. I had lunch with my daughter and it started getting cold and dark, so we went into my bedroom and closed the door to the kitchen. She always plays in my bedroom and her bedroom, which are directly connected. I was reading some Reddit stories while listening to her making her usual noises, talking to herself, singing, asking me questions, moving toys around, the basic children noises. Suddenly, in a moment, the house goes completely silent. After a few seconds, I think maybe she's being mischievous and doing something she isn't supposed to do, like all kids do. So, 
I go and check on her, since I couldn't see her from where I was laying. Let me make it clear that there is no way for her to go outside without opening the creaky door to the kitchen, which is right in front of me, and she never tried to do it since the lights in the kitchen were off and she's terrified of the dark. So I look everywhere in her bedroom and start calling her name. Nothing. I check in her closet. Nothing. Under her bed, in her little play tent, in her toy chest, under my bed, the sofa, the desk, everywhere. Nothing. She's nowhere to be seen. Let's mention she's never tried to hide or anything like that. And she comes when she's called, which she didn't, so I started to freak out. I knew that I didn't hear her leave my bedroom to the kitchen, but I checked anyway. Nothing. The bathroom. Empty. Now I'm really starting to panic. I go inside again. I check everything over. And while I'm in her bedroom, I hear her crying from outside. I look through my daughter's window to see her outside laying on the ground wearing only a t-shirt and not the t-shirt that she was previously wearing. One of the t-shirts that she does have, but a different one. I ran outside almost falling over but when I opened the door, silence. She wasn't there. There was no crying. There was nothing. I go outside and check everything, and I can't find her or any trace of her having been there. Defeated, I go back upstairs, ready to call 911. When I go to my bedroom, I see her calmly playing with some blocks in her bedroom. She was wearing the clothes she had been before, as though she had never disappeared. The t-shirt I had seen her wearing outside was in her wardrobe, neatly folded. I'm still in shock, still sitting here just staring at my daughter, feeling that if I blink, she might disappear again. I don't know if it was a glitch or what, but it terrified me, and I have no idea what to think. There have been a few notable events in my life that are illogical head scratchers. They never really felt creepy to me, more like harmless pranks by the universe. One of them happened a few years ago, in summer. My cat caught an oddly huge black bird, almost like a raven, and tore into the dead bird in our garden, right next to our terrace. I think this was the first time he ever caught a bird, let alone one that big. There were feathers and blood and entrails everywhere, I didn't know what to do with the fresh carcass, but I knew I couldn't let my cat finish eating it. Especially because he would throw up everywhere in the house later. So I shooed him off, grabbed an empty ceramic plant pot from the terrace, and placed it upside down over the bird in the grass. To make sure the cat didn't topple it over to get his prey, I placed a stack of four to six bricks on top of the plant pot. I then called my mom and asked her to dispose of the body once she'd come home from work, because I didn't think I could handle it without throwing up. I took the cat inside for the rest of the afternoon, and actually bathed him, because his paws and mouth were bloody too. My mom came home and I showed her into the garden. The pot was as I had left it, with the bricks neatly stacked on top. My mom braced for the worst, took them off, and turned the pot no bird. Not only no bird, no intestines, no blood, no feathers. The grass was pristine. I was dumbfounded, and my mom thought this was a super lame prank. No, I was not intoxicated. No, we don't have gas in the house. No, I was not on any medication. And no, I didn't sleep and dream it up. Later that evening, I went down the stone path that connects our garden with our house for the umpteenth time that day. I stopped in my tracks, completely startled, because in the middle of the stone path was the massacred bird. Definitely the same odd, huge black bird. Entrails out and everything, now full of flies and the blood around it dry since it had been baking in the sun all afternoon. I was like, what the hell? and called my mom over, who finally believed me at least that the bird actually existed. 
how that bird got from under the weighed down pot in the garden onto the path that we'd been walking on all day without us noticing it, while the pot and bricks remained perfectly in place, and why the grass under it was so pristine, I honestly don't know. For some reason, I didn't get a creepy or hostile feeling, but it was a funny head scratcher that in the end did seem like the cosmos was either glitching out or playing a prank on me. I've never thought about glitches in the Matrix as a serious thing, until I started reading more about them. All this time, I've blamed my weird experiences on ghosts. Though I've never seen one, I still believe in them, since my experiences are, at least to me, still unexplainable. I moved into my current house six years ago. It's almost a hundred years old, in the oldest neighborhood in my very large city. Weird things would happen, but we would just shrug it off. You know, lights flickering when we would tease each other about ghosts, things falling off the shelves and out of the cabinets, things going missing and then reappearing in weird places, or by weird means. And then, these three events happened. 1. Our living room TV remote disappeared for two years. Then, one afternoon, I was sitting on the couch, picking up little play balls and throwing them to my toddler. I went to pick up another ball, and right in the middle of the ball pile was the remote. It wasn't there when I made the ball pile. I still thought that maybe somehow the toddler had put it there, but I really don't think so. Number two. I used our garden hose, which has a very specific cap on it. I was done with the hose, wound it back up, turned it on to wash my hands off, turned it off, capped it, and walked away. As I was walking away, my roommate walked to the hose and immediately asked where the cap was. I turned, walked the several feet back to the hose, and sure enough, that cap was gone. Not on the ground, not in the bushes, nowhere. I still just thought that maybe somehow it got lost, but that doesn't make a bit of sense. I had just put that cap back on a few seconds before, and nobody else had walked up in that amount of time. Last, but definitely not least, the weirdest incident that actually made me believe it was a ghost was this. I was sitting on one side of the couch, and my roommate was on the other side. He started the movie that we were going to watch. I had an ashtray and a lighter sitting next to me. I put everything down right where it was supposed to go and then leaned the lighter onto the ashtray. A few minutes later, I went to get it again, but the lighter was gone. I figured maybe it slipped between the couch cushions or went somewhere else, but nope. We took all the cushions off and it wasn't there. My roommate picked the entire couch up, and nothing was underneath it. The lighter just... vanished. I ended up having to use a book of matches. After the movie, I went to bed, but I left everything else, minus the lighter, on the couch. I woke up the next morning, but where I had left my matches was my lighter, laying right in its spot. At first, I was like, let's be reasonable here, and called my roommate. He said that he didn't find or see the lighter, but he remembers the matches because he used one in the morning before he left for work and put them right next to the ashtray. Ever since then, I was convinced that there was a ghost in my house, but maybe these are glitches in the matrix. What do you think? This happened when I was 20, and I'm 22 now. My mom and dad are separated, and my mom lives a state away from my dad and I. Around Christmas time, she was going to be passing through our state visiting family, 
so we decided to meet at a local cafe and spend the day together. We went to dinner, spent some time at the mall, and had a pretty good time. Her husband took some pictures of us since we rarely got together. My mom sent me the digital photos just after, and some weeks after that she sent a letter with a physical copy of one of the pictures. It was a small photograph, so I decided to slip it into the corner of my mirror to display it. I believe I recall snapping a picture of said photo in the mirror to send to my mom so I could show her how I had displayed it but I didn't like how it turned out. This is where things get more muddled and weird. My dad had recently gotten engaged to his girlfriend and were in the arduous process of buying a house together. My dad managed a small store that seldom got many walk-ins, so he'd been filling out paperwork on the clock. When he'd finished, he snapped a picture of a signed document and sent it to his fiance so she could see. She replied, why'd you send me a picture of Seth and his mom? My dad was confused. On his screen, it showed the picture he took of the document embedded in his message, but when he asked her to send it back, what she'd received, lo and behold, was a picture of my mom and I sitting together. My dad told me about it when he got back from work and showed me the pictures and messages. He told me he'd gone through all of his phone and that picture was nowhere to be found. I was confused, but inclined to believe nothing happened. At least nothing that couldn't be logically explained. Maybe when my mom had sent me the digital pictures, I had texted that one to my dad for whatever reason. I went through our message history and there was nothing though. Maybe I had sent it to his fiance, but no dice. Perplexed, I asked to see the picture again and I noticed something. It wasn't the digital picture. In the bottom corner of the image, you could see a wooden frame. I went to my room and confirmed it. It was the frame of my mirror. I was freaked out, but determined. Like I said, I thought I remembered trying to take pictures of it sitting in the mirror. I looked through all my photos and those I had recently deleted, but it wasn't there. If I had taken it and deleted it, I worked out the time to find that it would have just expired and been permanently wiped from my phone. Maybe I was mistaken on whether or not I had chosen to send it to my mom, so I checked our messages as well. Nothing. I was genuinely perplexed and went back to my dad with my findings. He pointed out that even if I had found the same image on my phone, it wouldn't explain how it made its way into a conversation between him and his fiance. It was just unreasonably bizarre. I turned to Google as a last ditch effort to find some evidence that I wasn't alone in this phenomenon that perhaps it had happened to someone else and they'd found a worthwhile explanation. I found posts about cloud users winding up with strangers' photos on their phone due to some faulty photo sharing settings, but nothing similar or applicable to my situation. I hadn't enabled any kind of photo sharing options and my dad didn't even have an iPhone. The only thing that linked our phones together was us sharing the same Wi-Fi and that was a loose link at that. I could never rationalize what happened. His fiance ended up showing me her phone too to confirm that her message feed looked different from my dad's and she had no trace of the photo already in her library. At this point, I wasn't even surprised. The two of them seemed to quickly forget about the odd ordeal and my mom more or less brushed it off when I shared the story with her. I was left with my own troubled thoughts about what this implied, about the level of control and privacy we really have if a photo utterly erased from existence in all capacity can somehow resurface in an unrelated format with no tangible source. To me, this was not so much a glitch in our physical matrix, but a glitch in a more real and less tangible one. Needless to say, I've largely pushed this event from my mind. The paranoia does no good, and I just have to accept that it's beyond my understanding and my control. But if anyone out there has greater understanding of networks and data in the technological world, Maybe you can take this as more palatable food for thought. But from my perspective, Lord knows I've bit off more than I can chew. All I'm left thinking is, what else has the potential to show up where it doesn't belong? This happened a few weeks ago, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I went for a late night drive, I'm talking 3am. 
and I was driving alone down this empty road that leads outside of my city. It's a pretty small road, two lanes, and it has zero street lights. I have no lights on inside of the car, and I dimmed my dashboard lights to their lowest setting. I did have my high beams on, because of the lack of street lights. As I'm driving along, I see headlights approaching me. So, to be a courteous driver, I switch off my high beams back to the normal setting. I'm bringing this detail up because after telling several friends this story, they all claim that it was some kind of reflection. However, when I changed my headlights, the approaching lights did not dim. The headlights ahead of me turned right onto a small road leading into a development under construction. Five seconds later, I drive past the turnoff and the car is completely gone. There are no cars parked on the street. Nothing. It instantly caught my attention that this car had just vanished. I whipped my car around and I went into the development that the car had turned into. I drive down to the end of the development and it's a complete dead end. No other cars are parked in the development. Nothing. This car just vanished. I've driven the road several times since to see if there was a possibility of a reflection or anything, but I cannot replicate it. The car straight up disappeared. My boyfriend and I have a tradition where we'll meet at Sheets and get curly fries and milkshakes together and then sit in the car and listen to music. His workplace is only about a minute's drive from the Sheets that we go to, so we meet there after his shifts, typically. We decided to meet up last night, just like usual. It was just after 8 p.m. when I pulled into the parking lot. I saw his car and parked in the spot right next to him, fully expecting to look at him through the window and see him laughing at my bad parking. I turned and looked at him through the window, and we locked eyes for a moment, until I watched him back out of his spot and drive to the exit of the parking lot. I watched him stop at the stop sign and then drive away on the route he always takes to go home. I sat there extremely confused. I checked my phone for a text in case maybe something had come up and he needed to go home, but I had no messages from him. I started to panic a little wondering if I had done something wrong and he was upset with me, but even then he's not the type to just leave like that. I sat in my car for a few minutes before deciding to text him. All I sent was, um, before he replied, I'm here. I was even more confused. I know I had seen him leave. I saw him in his car, wearing the purple shirt and hat he'd been wearing all day, and I saw his license plate. It's a four-letter word, so it's easy to memorize. I know that I had seen him. I watched him leave the area and start going home. So there was no way he could have pulled back into the parking lot without me seeing. He told me to meet him inside, and sure enough, there he was at the door, heading into the building. I was pretty startled, and I still am, because I know for a fact that I watched him look at me through the window and then leave. I told him what happened, and we both just laughed it off, but I can't help but feeling weird about it. I can't imagine how somebody else could look exactly like my boyfriend, and have the same car, and the same work outfit, and the same license plate. I don't know what happened, and I'm not sure if I hallucinated or something, but I'm pretty sure I experienced a glitch in the Matrix. I was 18 and living in a big house in a small village with my mom. We had a large garden with a designated area for our eight rabbits. Every evening, we would take turns to go out to feed the animals before it got dark. However, this particular evening, we had arrived home so late that it was already darker than usual. We agreed to feed the rabbits together because it can be quite creepy out in the garden alone at night. 
I went to the bathroom and told my mom that I would meet her out there in a minute. When I was done, I went straight to the garden, where I heard my mom call, Jess? As she heard the door close behind me. I answered, yes, and I saw her upper body pop up from behind the trampoline to make sure it was me. There were no lights outside, However, the combination of the moon, stars, and distant low light of the motorway was enough to illuminate the area to be able to see quite clearly. I was only around 10 meters from her, so I could see her face and her very distinct big curly blonde hair. She said, okay, and bent back down behind the trampoline to continue feeding the rabbits. I looked down at the grass as I made my way to the bottom of the garden, so as not to step in any holes dug out by the rabbits during their runaround time. As I made my way down, I spoke to her about how naughty one of the rabbits was acting that day. It took me no longer than seven seconds to get to the rabbit area. As I approached behind the trampoline where the rabbit's hutches were, I looked up and expected to see my mom standing there, as I had just seen and spoken to her a few moments before. She wasn't there. I looked around for a few seconds thinking she might be hiding in order to give me a playful scare, when, to my horror, I heard the back door of the house close. I looked up quickly and saw my mom walking out into the garden. I immediately speed walked up that garden toward her so fast with total terror in my eyes. She asked me what was the matter and I just said, I'm never going down there again. I just saw you and spoke to you and by the time I got down there you were gone. Then you walked out the door. She looked at me wide-eyed and assured me that she had been in the kitchen getting her shoes on the entire time. She's not skeptical at all about these kinds of things, and from the look on my face, she could tell that I had experienced quite a scare, so she believed me straight away. We were both quite nervous about going back down there. However, the rabbits needed feeding, so we had a nervous laugh and cautiously went down to feed the rabbits together. We had a look around, and there was nothing there. I don't know who or what I spoke to in my garden. Maybe it was a glitch in the matrix and my mom from another timeline appeared to feed my rabbits. Or perhaps some darker forces were at work that night. I've read a little bit about doppelgangers and how some people recognize them as warnings of death. I don't know if it's related, but not long after this incident, half the rabbits dropped dead within a few days of each other. I still can't explain what happened. Some crazy things have been happening. It appears that I can communicate with myself from other parallel dimensions. Maybe there's even a glitch in the matrix going on. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. I have been having a really hard time remembering stuff, and it appears I have memories that aren't mine. Like they never happened to me, or sometimes memories that are mine, but with one thing slightly changed. And no, I don't have any diagnosed mental illnesses, and there's nothing else going on in my life or health that would explain this. Sometimes I'll lose my keys or some shirts or just stuff in general because I misplace them. However, I'm also a very organized person. I put every single thing in a specific spot so I know where things are. I live alone so nobody else has access to my stuff. At first, my stuff would move around like I would find keys on my backpack, even though I never, ever put my keys on my backpack. I always keep them on my lanyard along with my college student ID and my purse. For example, one day I could not find my keys. Like I said, they're usually on my student lanyard. A couple of hours passed and I had a memory of me coming home in a Honda from the gas station and placing them inside the front pocket of my backpack. Sure enough, I checked and the keys were inside my backpack in the front pocket. The only problem is, in that front pocket is where I usually keep my gum. Also, I don't drive, I barely have my permit, and I don't even own a Honda. So whose memory was that, and why were the keys there? At first I thought I was going crazy, but then it kept happening. I put it to the test. I specifically wrote down where I put some things. I made a list. The same thing kept happening, at least once every two months. 
It was rare, but it did happen. One time my mom called me and told me she lost her passport, and I suddenly had a memory of me putting it in a specific drawer in her room on Valentine's Day. Only problem is, I hadn't seen my mom in the past eight months, and I spent Valentine's Day with my boyfriend in San Diego. She was recently married and moved into a new house that I've never been to, and I've never seen that drawer before. Regardless, that's where it was. So once again, whose memories am I having? And why does it allow me to find stuff? The only theory that I have is that this is some sort of Mandela effect or parallel realities clashing. Please let me know if anything similar has ever happened to you. For context, I'm only 20, I have good mental health, I'm not predisposed to any mental or intellectual illnesses, I live by myself in a good area, and I'm just a normal human being. So if anyone has any theories or leads on what I should research, let me know. My mother is the sweetest woman. Sometimes she slips money into my wallet for things, even though at this point in my life I don't really need it, thankfully. I recently used my PayPal account to order and ship something for her because she had forgotten the password to her own account. It cost about $20 and I never thought about it again. She, not surprisingly, left a $20 bill on my kitchen counter a week or so later. I found it after she left, stuck it in my purse, and then went to sleep. I randomly remembered it a couple of days later, and I sent her a quick text message while she was at work that said, Oh, I did find that $20 you left. Thank you. That's all it said. She sent me a message about an hour later that said, That was the cutest picture of you, but now I can't find it. I asked which photo, because of course all I had sent was the text no photo. She said she was busy at work, but on the screen she saw the small unread text and a photo, so she quickly opened it to see the full photo of me. She showed it to her co-worker, so she's not the only one who saw this. She described the photo. She said I was holding a $20 bill right under my face and cheesing hard. She described my shirt and my hairstyle. Here's the thing. She described exactly how I was dressed, and exactly how I had done my hair that day. But I am a million percent sure that I never took a photo, nor did I send her one. Just a thank you text. She was trying to figure out how I could delete the photo after sending it to her phone. If that is possible, I certainly am not capable of doing it, nor would I. All I can think is that there was some kind of glitch. This isn't the first time I've experienced a glitch, but it is the first in a long time, and I just thought I would share. I'm not sure if this is a numerical glitch or just an uncanny coincidence. This story isn't anywhere near as interesting or eerie as some of the stuff I've seen and heard. It might be one of those guess-you-had-to-be-there stories. But this rather strange thing happened to me and I strongly feel like it was either a glitch or a synchronicity of some sort, and I've always wanted to tell this story. When I was in my early teens, I always liked the numbers 2549. They were just my favorite numbers, specifically those four, specifically in that order. I don't know why, but I always felt like they rolled off the tongue, and being a dumbass kid, I'd go around saying 2549, 2549. If I needed a password for something, it was 2549. When my parents let me choose their lottery numbers, it was 2549. My brother would always tell me to shut up and that nobody cared about my favorite numbers and that they weren't cool or significant in any way. I knew that. I just liked them. Fast forward to me turning 14, I got my first cell phone. My parents were very strict, I never had a phone as a child. Anyway, I'm really bad with technology, so I asked my tech-savvy brother to help me with setting it up and with SIM activation and whatnot. 
A few minutes after fiddling around, he looks at me in disbelief. He goes, Laney, have you seen your cell phone number? I hadn't even looked at it, let alone tried to memorize it. So I was like, no, why do you ask? He was like, come over here and have a look. I swear that the last four digits of my cell phone number were 2549, in that order. My favorite four numbers in the correct order just happened to be the last four digits of my first cell phone number, a randomly generated number that nobody had picked. My brother's the only one who understands the strangeness of it because he had heard me harp on about those numbers our entire childhood. We both just stared at it and then laughed at how coincidental it all was. To this day, my phone number is still the same and I always chuckle to myself when I give people my number because I still enjoy saying the numbers out loud, just as I did when I was a kid. Life is weird. Last night, I went to pick up my dog from my dad's house, and something really weird happened. It was around 10 p.m., and I picked up my dog. I've driven from my dad's house at night a thousand times, and I know the road back like the back of my hand. He lives on a ranch, and to get back to the freeway, you have to turn left when the road forks. So I'm driving to the end of this road, but the fork never comes. I keep driving on and on and on, but the road isn't ending. After a good 10 minutes, and note that this road is rather short and should have only taken me about two minutes, the road finally forks. I make a left, and on the side of the road I see glowing eyes, like cat eyes. Then the road just ends into a big ditch. This road should have led to the freeway. I turned around and started driving back, when all of a sudden a dog jumps on the side of my car. This thing is growling and snarling at the window. This is gonna sound lame, but it's the truth. I got chills and a really bad feeling of dread. And I'm like 90% sure that that was not a dog. I slowed down, panicking, because I thought I was going to accidentally hit this dog. I love dogs, even demonic ones. But then it just disappears. I looked around the car with my flashlight, and this thing was just gone. I floored it out of there and turned back onto what I thought was the main road, and kept driving. I got the GPS to navigate back to my house, and it said that I was a little less than 10 miles away from the freeway. This is literally impossible, because the road that my dad lives on is not that long, nor does it lead to any other road that long. I was so panicked that I floored it home, and I forgot to expand the map to see where the heck I was. Once I got home and calmed down, I went on Google Earth to try to see where I went. And it doesn't exist. There's not a single road that long, nor anything that resembles what I saw anywhere in that area. I have no clue what happened, and my friend and I are convinced that I traveled into an alternate universe for a little bit last night. That the cat that turned into the dog was a skinwalker. Whatever else, we don't really know. It's currently 12.03 a.m. and I'm still processing what happened today. I was home with just my nephew, who was taking a shower, so nobody could have opened the door. A little backstory. My dog Ziggy and I were outside so he could take care of business. When he was done, we came back in. As we're coming inside, my nephew is pulling up. He comes in and gets in the shower. I come into my bedroom, leaving Ziggy in the living room I walk up to my bedroom window, and I see Ziggy running from the chinaberry tree in the yard to the corner of the house. Instantly tripping, I run from the bedroom to the front door, 
which is right by my bedroom. I open the door and call for him. As I'm calling his name, my nephew opens the bathroom door. He's right here, he says. Now when I tell you my mind was warped, I mean it was gone. I stood there for five minutes, staring. I didn't know what to think. He was literally just running in the yard two seconds ago. How the hell did that happen? I was so confused. Has this happened to anybody else? This is something my grandma told me. It was summer in the late 70s. My grandpa was stationed in California while my grandma, mom, and uncle were living in Oklahoma. My grandma and great-grandpa decided to take a trip with the kids to visit my grandpa in California. They made it there safely and had a really good time while they were there. The morning they left, my great-grandpa called my great-grandma back in Oklahoma to let her know they were about to hit the road. It was about a three-day drive, taking the scenic route and stopping to sleep at rest stops. It was a normal trip, my mom and her younger brother playing in the back seat. They had made it to New Mexico and were only about eight hours away from home, when they were suddenly hit by a freak blizzard. They could barely see where they were going, so they were driving slowly and looking for somewhere safe to pull over and wait out the storm. They saw a bunch of lights on the road coming toward them, and assuming it was emergency vehicles, they pulled over to the side of the road to let them pass. The next thing they know, an officer tapped on their window, waking them all up and asking them to move along. They were confused, but just kind of brushed it off, thinking maybe they had just decided to sleep where they were rather than continue driving through the blizzard. Except when they started to look around, there was no snow. There was no sign whatsoever of any storm. They stopped at a gas station and my grandma said something to the attendant about the storm. He didn't say anything, but looked at her like she was nuts. They got back on the road and were home that evening. When they got home, my great-grandma was in a full panic, asking them what the hell happened to them. Apparently, it had been 10 days since my great-grandpa called to say they were heading home. They all have an entire week of their life missing, and they have no idea what happened to them or where they were during that week. I never really thought of this as a glitch until recently, but either way, it's one of my most vivid memories. One time, my family and I were staying in this motel on the side of the highway because we were driving up to Northern California on a road trip. It was like a one night stay and in the morning we were supposed to leave. My mom couldn't find her wedding ring. We looked everywhere. We turned that place inside out and our checkout was in like four hours, so we were desperately searching for this ring. I started praying and basically asking for a sign of where it could be because my mom was devastated. Suddenly, it was so weird. It was like the entire world disappeared and in my head, all I could see was this suitcase. I looked at it and I just knew instantly that it was in the suitcase. I opened it up and my parents were yelling at me because I was throwing all of our neatly folded clothes out, but there it was, the ring. My parents were like, how the hell did you know it was there? At the time, I thought maybe it was God, and who knows, I mean, I did pray after all. But the experience of finding it felt almost telepathic. The best way to describe it was like tunnel vision, and we still don't know how it ended up there. My mom chalked it up to accidentally falling off when she was getting clothes for the shower, but how would I have known that? It was truly bizarre. The certainty, the absolute certainty that I felt in that moment. It was like nothing I've ever experienced. Glitch or not, it's still one of my most vivid memories.
Last year, I was off work for five months because of tumors in my throat. After surgery, I started a new job and my first week back at work, I was cashing through a lady who had two carts full of stuff. So obviously I was helping her for a while. She had her daughter with her, who was probably 12 to 14 and was very high on the autism spectrum. She wasn't nonverbal per se, but she apparently didn't like to talk to strangers at all and generally preferred not to speak whatsoever. Her mom said that there are only three people she ever speaks to, otherwise she ignores everybody. So anyway, she's talking to me the whole time, telling me about the balloon she's getting and how she likes going to stores, which had her mom so happy and surprised she was trying not to cry. The girl was talking to me the entire time, and I was honored. Then, suddenly the girl asks, so how's your throat feeling? Her mom looks at her and says, that's such an odd question to ask someone. Why are you asking her that? The mom laughs and the girl asks me again. I told her it's feeling pretty good and I asked how hers is. She said, mine's good too, but I was worried about you. It was so weird and her mom's like, sorry, I don't know why she's being so odd. I told her, no, it's okay, it's just super ironic because I just had surgery on my throat in April. The girl goes, yeah, I know, that's why I asked. The mom freaked out, thinking her daughter must be sensitive or have a connection to the world that we can't understand. I have no idea what it was, if it was a glitch or an encounter with someone who was psychic, but it was really strange and kind of beautiful. I wondered if maybe she knew me in another dimension, or maybe she's just in tune with another dimension. Maybe time is more fluid to her and she can know these things. Maybe another me met her before my surgery. Maybe it was just coincidence though, who knows. But it was interesting nonetheless. My husband recently took an overnight job to help us out during the pandemic. He's only been there about two weeks and works evenings and overnights from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Last night was no different. He left home around 8.15 p.m. Our daughter, age 11, and I decided to make it a movie night. Around 11 p.m., I heard keys in my back door and the usual sounds my husband makes when he comes home. I crept out to the kitchen to make sure it was him, and it was. He told me he needed to grab his knee compression sleeve, walked down the hall, said hi to our daughter as he passed to the living room, and went upstairs. He came back down, gave me a kiss, and left. We finished our movie and went to bed. In the morning when he got home, I made a joking comment about him being forgetful since he had forgotten his knee sleeve. He looked genuinely confused as I recalled the previous night. Our daughter confirmed everything that I said, but he was still just as confused as before. I pulled up our security motion camera on my phone to show him when he popped in quickly, but there was no footage from the night before or any other night of him coming home after he had left for work. My daughter and I both heard him both saw him and I touched him, but he was never home during that time. Nothing else ever happened out of the ordinary like that night, but we seriously have no idea what happened. A few years ago in college, I was on a dance team. Every fall, we would hold auditions, and a new girl would join the team. Her nickname to me is Panda, so that's what I'm going to call her for this story. She was really nice, but I also didn't think much of it, as she was just an acquaintance at this point. Anyway, I was going through some dark shit in college, and I was journaling one day. I remember specifically writing a line like, I don't want to be here anymore, and I don't know what to do about it. 
Immediately after writing that, Panda's name popped into my head. It's almost like it was implanted in my head, rather than a thought that came from the conscious me. I wrote her name with a question mark after it. I didn't really know what to think. It was entirely random to me. At this point, I hadn't known her well enough to assume that she'd been going through anything. I wasn't sure what made me write her name down after that statement, but I moved along with my journaling. Later that same day, our dance team met at a party, and I could tell that something was off with her. Based on the weirdness of journaling earlier that day, I felt compelled to pull her aside and ask what was wrong. It turns out she was struggling with self-harm, which I could entirely relate to based on my past. I was taken aback. That's a weird enough coincidence. But what really floored me is that right after she admitted that to me, she said, I don't want to be here anymore, and I don't know what to do about it. It was the exact sentence I had written in my journal with her name next to it with a question mark. I guess it could be considered a common statement, and I know that it's not the craziest glitch in the matrix if that's even what it is, but I'm also not somebody that expects things like this to happen to me. I know the universe is weird, but my life feels very average and normal. What are the chances that I would write something down like that with her name next to it, hours before it was said to me, accurately predicting who was going to say it? Ultimately, she and I ended up becoming best friends, and it was that day that made all the difference. But it still weirds me out to this day. I am a 30-year-old male. When I was in my early 20s, I had a strange encounter with a man who claimed to be from my future. I'm not entirely sure that this could be considered a glitch. However, this incident was definitely peculiar and I haven't been able to completely forget about it since. Admittedly, some details are now hazy as this happened to me over 10 years ago, but I have tried my hardest to remember as much information as I could in hopes of getting some closure. Around 2011, I was taking Japanese night classes once per week at a local university here in the UK. At the time, my classes would finish at around 9pm, and I would usually return home via train. I was still living with my parents back then, and I distinctly remember having a small window of time to catch the infrequent night train back to my hometown after my lessons would end. It was winter and I recall the station being busy with Christmas shoppers. I had unfortunately missed my usual train and had to wait over an hour for the next arrival. I was looking up at the live departure board with frustration when I was approached by a friendly American man in his early to mid 40s. I remember that he was underdressed for the weather or even the season as it had been snowing for days and was particularly cold outside. He was wearing only a baseball cap, a sweatshirt, and a light windbreaker. Nothing about this struck me as too odd at the time, as I gathered he must just be a tourist who had not anticipated how cold it could be. Back then, I was incredibly shy and I wasn't the type to strike up conversations with strangers. However, I recall feeling entirely at ease from the moment I saw him. He was tall, athletic, and spoke with a strong accent. He was friendly and approachable. Nothing about him gave off any warning signals. If anything, I was taken aback at how unconventionally attractive he was. Our first interaction was brief. He initiated our conversation by asking if I had been waiting long. I naturally replied out of politeness if he had been stuck waiting for a while too. He was in fact, quote, waiting for a friend and had just gotten into town. This quickly evolved into us both making small talk, with him introducing himself as John. Eventually, he asked if I wanted to grab a coffee on the account of how easily we hit things off. My train was due to arrive and I didn't have much time, so John quickly asked if I wanted to pick up where we'd left off again over coffee tomorrow. I agreed, we exchanged numbers, and I left to catch my train home. 
I remember after this instance, I felt a feeling similar to deja vu. It was like a wave of familiarity had washed over me. I was 100% sure that I had never met John in my life. However, I was left with this strange, overwhelming feeling after departing. I felt intrigued by him. When I arrived home, I received a few text messages from John and we agreed to meet up in the same location the following day. At this time in my life, I was still closeted and I hadn't come out to my parents as being gay, and I wasn't prepared to tell them I was meeting with a stranger. I usually pride myself on being a good judge of character, and I would not have agreed to meet John if I hadn't felt that the situation was safe. After all, it was difficult to meet guys at that age, and I wasn't about to pass up the opportunity of a date with this handsome older dude who I just felt an abundance of chemistry with. However, I did make sure to let some of my friends know my situation in case anything were to happen. The following day, John was waiting for me at the same location we had met the night before. Despite the freezing weather, he was still wearing the same light clothing and baseball cap. I can recall him being incredibly charming, and I felt the same overwhelming sense of being familiar with him from the moment we met. I was definitely curious, and I was eager to find out more about him. At this point, we couldn't decide on a location and wandered aimlessly around before deciding to grab coffee at a local Starbucks. As we started to make conversation, I noticed that he was only interested in talking about what I had to say. I remember that he seemed overly happy to be talking with me. When I would speak, he was often so excited that he would barely let me finish before moving on to another topic of conversation. I almost got the impression that he knew what I was about to say already. For instance, he knew that I had a sister before I told him. I also noticed that he would rarely talk about himself, often sidestepping my questions or changing the flow of conversation when I asked him anything directly. He was definitely quirky, and for the most part we spoke about our shared interests. I remember thinking that he was odd, but I definitely didn't feel suspicious of him, despite the fact that he seemed rather private. The only information I remember about him was that he was from America, but that he had been traveling for some time, the way he put it. He claimed to play several instruments and was in a band, and he mentioned that he had a troubled religious upbringing. However, this is where things get strange. John and I left the coffee shop and decided to go for another walk around the city. We spoke for a long time, and I remember that we'd been laughing a lot and generally enjoying the time we'd spent together. However, we eventually stopped along the riverfront that runs throughout my city, leaning over a bridge as we spoke some more about each other's lives. This is when John asked if he could give me a hug. I remember looking up at him, and his expression seemed genuinely melancholic all of a sudden, almost bittersweet. Although I was feeling a little confused, I said, of course, and hesitantly leaned in for the embrace. I remember that he hugged me incredibly tightly, and when we eventually let go, there were tears in his eyes. I asked him if he was okay and asked what was going on. Admittedly now feeling incredibly confused and a little bit concerned by what was happening all of a sudden, he said, you're never going to believe me. I can't quite remember the entire flow of the conversation that followed. However, I will try to summarize everything as best I can. We took a seat on a nearby bench, where I remember that his composure was incredibly calm, and he said everything with the sincerest conviction. He told me that he was somebody from my near future, and that we knew each other very well. He told me that he had traveled back in time to visit me. However, he was incredibly adamant about not answering how or why he had managed to do so, only stating that it was, quote, recreational, and that time travel, quote, doesn't work how we think, stating to me that he had only wanted to visit me once more adding that I was much younger than he had anticipated, and that I looked so different from when he knew me. He almost hinted that he had found me at the wrong age. I could tell that there was a feeling of sadness throughout everything he was telling me, as he kept repeating over and over 
how happy he was to see me, yet he said everything with tears in his eyes. I instantly began taking everything he was saying as a joke, feeling skeptical and ready to leave immediately. I remember standing up and telling him that I had to go. The information was too much for me to process, and I felt the same overwhelming flood of deja vu creep back into my system. The sensation was so intense that I remember trembling as I stood up to leave, with the atmosphere around me suddenly experiencing a drop in pressure. This is when he took me by the hand and said, I'll see you again someday. I ran away without saying anything. I remember being so overcome by emotion that I burst into tears as soon as I was out of sight. Afterwards, I was so confused and disturbed by the situation, it took me days to process it all before attempting to articulate it to my younger sister and friends, all of whom remember this incident as the crazy tourist I went on a date with. However, 10 years have passed, and I can't help but feel affected by this incident. Every now and then, I remember the face of John and the strange feeling of contentment and familiarity I had around him. After our date, I remember trying to text or call the number that he contacted me on, only to be notified that that number no longer exists by an automated message. He had seemingly vanished without a trace, with no further instances of seeing or being contacted by him since. This definitely could have been a case of an individual who was clearly unhinged, but it was so eerie that I haven't been able to forget about it. I have always wondered who John was, or perhaps who I was to him in this possible future. Nowadays, I am currently in a happy relationship with my partner of six years, whom I have no intention of ever leaving. But every time I recall this enigmatic encounter I had with John, I can't help but wonder if I had glimpsed into a possible or parallel future, one where things have drastically changed for me on a personal level. I have so many questions surrounding what he told me. Was I still alive in his time? Were we romantically involved? Was he a future colleague or even family? Every time I recall these long distant memories, I'm overcome by an inexplicable wave of emotion, almost like I've lost something. It's incredibly difficult for me to articulate the feeling that I felt that night. I have never been able to forget about it and I am entirely sure that I would still recognize John today if I ever encountered him again. This is the first time I have ever shared the full version of this story outside of my immediate circle, but after discovering the community here, I felt the need to share. Has anyone ever experienced anything similar? Or have perhaps read other relatable stories or have suggestions or ideas? I've felt almost haunted by this meeting since it happened and I would love a little bit of insight from those more experienced in theories and concepts of time travels and glitches. This happened about 20 years ago when I was 16, but I remember it like it just happened, because it freaked me out so badly. I've never seen anything like it before, and I wouldn't have believed it if somebody had told me the story. But I witnessed it myself, and I have never been able to find a logical explanation. I was a huge boring nerd, and I still am. So I was lying in bed reading The Complete Idiot's Guide to Learning Latin. You can look it up online to see how it looks. Big orange and white book with black print like textbook sized. I heard my mom call to me from the living room, so I sat up and glanced around for something to use as a bookmark, since I was always very careful with my books and refused to dog ear the pages. I didn't see anything handy, and my mom called for me again, so I knelt down next to my bed and carefully tented the book on the floor at a steep angle so the spine wouldn't take damage. Then I opened my door and walked out. Our house was a three bedroom, but not very big. When I walked out of my room, I turned left and went down the hallway past my brother's bedroom door, which was closed. He had a habit of pacing his room while he talked on the cordless phone, 
and I could hear him doing just that as I walked by. At the end of the hallway, I turned to look into the living room, but I didn't leave the hall. My mom was sitting on the couch with her boyfriend, and she looked over and asked if I knew where the remote was. I said I didn't, and she said, okay, so I walked back to my room. I was gone maybe 45 seconds at the max. I walked in, closed the door, and turned to walk over and pick up my Latin book, but there was nothing there. It was gone. It was so unexpected and impossible that I just froze. It was like my brain couldn't come up with any possible actions to take in this situation, so I just stood there, staring blankly. There were only four people in the house, one of which was me. My brother never left his room during those 45 seconds. I'd have heard his bedroom door open, and I'd have heard him stop talking. He has a very deep, rumbly voice. My mom and her boyfriend were getting ready to watch a movie in the living room. Even if one of them had tried to pull a weird, random prank by taking my book, they wouldn't have had time to pull it off, unless they'd literally been running, which I would have seen and heard. And it's not like anyone could have broken in and taken it. The previous owners had been burglarized once, so they had a burglar bar installed on all the windows and doors. Our joking nickname for the house was Fort Knox. Besides, what thief would come in and steal a Latin book? All this was running through my mind while I stood there staring. After a few minutes, I decided my mind must be playing tricks on me. I know the human brain can ignore information right in front of it if it decides it isn't important for some reason, which is how we can miss seeing something in plain view. I was amazed to have an awareness of the phenomenon in real time, and I marveled over how strange the brain is. I started to slowly approach the spot on the floor while staring at it, wanting to see the moment when the book would appear to materialize there as my mind stopped being stupid. But it didn't happen. I thought, all right, well, my eyes are playing tricks on me, but my hands won't. And I crouched down and swept my hands across that spot on the floor where the book should be. I felt nothing, just the carpet. I was totally shocked because my mind is playing tricks was the only reasonable explanation that I'd had. And now that was out. Had I completely imagined the crystal clear memory of tenting the book on the floor? After a few more moments of staring and rubbing my hands all over the floor, I decided that was the only other possible explanation. I must have actually put the book somewhere else. I got up and proceeded to tear my room apart. I pulled blankets and pillows off the bed, combed through both of my bookshelves, opened desk drawers and dresser drawers, shook out clothing, even opened my closet and practically turned it inside out. Every few seconds I would stare back at that spot on the floor, but it was empty. After close to an hour of searching, I finally laid down to peer underneath my dresser. Nothing. Then I sat up, shaking my head in defeat. There was nowhere left to look. I glanced back one more time at the spot on the floor. The book was there, exactly where I thought it had been, tented just how I had left it. I froze up again, breathless, feeling like I had just been electrocuted. How the... After I unfroze, I gingerly picked it up and looked at the page it was open to. Same page that I'd been on when I put it down. It was as though the past hour had never happened, except that now my room was trashed. Where in the world did my book go? And how did it come back? So this happened a week ago, and my whole family is still kind of freaked out about it. Our last upstairs neighbors moved out about six months ago, and the house had been empty until about two months ago. We put it at about that time that we first detected the presence of our new neighbors. Now, we were close with the first family who had lived there, and they were tenants. They were moving out because they had bought a house of their own and we had even helped them with the process. 
This is an important detail, because on their last day there, I remember as clear as day my mother asking them if the original owner had found somebody else to rent it out. They replied that they hadn't, as far as they knew. We had never met the owner. The incident that I'm about to describe was all the more surprising, considering we had never seen a mover's truck or any other items being unloaded and moved, but we just chalked that up to our own ignorance. We lived in a huge apartment complex after all, these things happen. Fast forward a month later and we were already annoyed by their presence. We would hear loud footsteps, both running and walking, in the middle of the night, sometimes extending to the wee hours of the morning, the creaking of heavy furniture being dragged, weird scurrying noises like there was an animal with them, and on some particularly nasty days, even steel vessels being dropped, a ball being dribbled, a glass marble bouncing, or the ringing sound of a coin being dropped before it settled, and many other sounds we could never identify, but you get the idea. In case you haven't gleaned from this point on already, the walls here are pretty thin. On this particularly chilling day last week, it was about 11 p.m. at night. That's when we heard the first set of knocks. It was just a tiny rap of three, one quickly after the other and you couldn't have heard it unless you were really quiet. They weren't so much knocks made with fists as someone using an object to probably tap on the floor repeatedly. So when that first set came, we were surprised because it was pretty late in the night and we weren't expecting anybody. Everyone was home. We waited a while and when we didn't hear anything again, we shrugged and thought it was a prank or a mistake and went back to doing our own thing. For context, we were not in the living room opposite where our front door was. We were at the other end of the house. So these knocks were louder than what you would expect to hear in case somebody really was at the front door. Half an hour later, we hear, yet again, another set of knocks, this time five, each one oddly drawn out and increasingly heavy. This is when we realized that it was coming from upstairs. Now, you have to realize that this did not phase us in the slightest. They were habitually noisy, so while we did freeze for a moment or two, we just carried on. At about this time, my parents start talking about how this was their last straw, and the next time they were to even so much as move, they would get put on blast on our building's WhatsApp group. The next and final set came an hour later. It was just two this time. Except they sounded less like knocks and more like sacks of beets being dropped. I think I even heard something tiny roll after that second one, but I'm not sure about that part. At this point, it was around 12.30 in the morning, and my mother really did lose it. She did what she had promised to do. She posted for all to see how rude our neighbors were, and how inconsiderate and inconveniently loud, and she went back to sleep. Now this is where things get really weird. My mom awoke to a flurry of messages asking her who she was talking about. One lady who lived on the same floor as our neighbors told my mom that nobody had moved in there after the last ones had left. On hearing this, we were all very alarmed and upset because the four of us couldn't have imagined the exact same things, right? My father completely flipped and banged on the door countless times, to no avail. We did consider the possibility of squatters, but we could never verify because the owner wasn't in town and we would be breaking and entering if we tried to see for ourselves. We were convinced that it was very much real and had a perfectly rational explanation. But after that day, we didn't hear a single noise and the paranoia had very much set in, so we were always on our guard ready and wait for when they slipped up. It's been a week now, and I can't tell if we just experienced the weirdest glitch for two entire months or if something else is going on, so make of it what you will. Nobody believes us. Some even questioned why we put up with them for that long if we genuinely believed that they were a nuisance to us, and we don't really know how to answer that one. Maybe high tolerance? Maybe it's ghosts or some kind of haunting, but there's never been any issue with that before. 
Maybe it's a glitch in the Matrix, and they're from a parallel universe or something. Either way, it seems that our upstairs neighbors aren't real, and we have no idea what to do about it. One time I was in Russia. It was the first time that I had ever traveled there, and I was 19. It was actually Ukraine. I found a bar that I thought was so cool. I met a girl there, and we went back to her flat and hooked up. Six years later, I went to the exact same bar. I met another chick, and I went home with her. Only, it wasn't another chick. It was the same one as before. I didn't realize it until I was at her apartment. We hooked up, and I left with my hair standing on end. She spoke Ukrainian. I didn't. I don't even know if she recognized me, and it wasn't like I could ask her, so... There was a guy named Nikolai as well, and I met him on both trips too. The first time, I met him at a bar. The other time, I ran into him on some side street one day when I visited for the second time. This is the second biggest city in Crimea, with a population of over 330,000 people. What the hell are the chances of this happening twice? Interesting. Over the weekend, I was out of dental floss. I can't stand that. So I looked around for a forgotten roll. I looked in my son's bathroom as well. Nothing. On Tuesday night, my son and I went shopping and I picked up a floss, Tom's, that I had never tried before. I grabbed one because I'm very picky about floss and I was not sure whether or not I would like it. My son then asked if he could get one too and of course I said yes. We go home and my son unpacks the groceries. The two boxes of floss are on the counter. I take mine upstairs, unwrap it, throw the box in the bathroom trash, and try it that night. I hated it. Last night I go to floss again and there is now a second one in the drawer. The exact same. I think, well that's weird. Why did my son bring his floss into my bathroom? But I forgot about it because sometimes he uses my bathroom, so whatever. This evening, I'm cleaning up the kitchen, and there's his dental floss, on the counter, unopened. I go back upstairs. There are still two flosses in the drawer. They're both completely new, except that the one that I have used has, of course, a slightly smaller roll. The containers are transparent so you can see it. But I had never tried that kind before, and I only bought one. So how did I end up with two? I hate to admit it, but I have often read accounts of things like this happening with more skepticism. I always figured that people just forgot that they had two of something, because the items are so often insignificant. But here I am, in the possession of a mystery floss. I'm kind of honored and excited by the possibilities of what this could mean, but that's my glitch story. have four kids. I know that I have four kids, but recently I just feel like there should be another one, but they're missing. When we go out, I head count and I get flustered because I can't find the extra one. I have to consciously remind myself that there are only four, but my heart just doesn't believe it. I had just put it down as one of those weird feelings and I pushed it aside. Then my parents sent money to my kids they sent $100 to each kiddo. They sent me $500. I called them and asked them why they had put in so much. 
and they were confused and said that they told me they were sending $100 per child. I reminded them that I only have four kids. They were silent for a moment and then just kind of laughed and said they must be getting old because they thought there were five. Then tonight, my daughter walked into the lounge room. She looked around and said, I know we're all here, but our family feels small. My son agreed. I hadn't said anything to anybody about my feelings lately because they already think I'm ancient and forgetful at 40. I don't really know what this means, but it's definitely strange. And apparently it's not just me. Does anyone else ever have these feelings? Was my other kid lost in a glitch? I don't know what it could be. I'm not sure if this is considered a glitch, but most nights, and I mean not every night, I can hear people talking. I can never fully hear what they're saying, but I hear people chatting back and forth. I wish I could say I hear the same people talking, but every time I hear them, it's not always the same voices. I do live in a building with four other tenants. But the thing is, I usually hear this chattering at odd hours of the night. It's when my well-known neighbors are asleep. I work in a kitchen, and I usually don't get home from work until at least 1am, so I'm usually up until about 6. I could chalk it up to spiritual activity, but it doesn't feel like that. It's almost like I'm hearing a life that I've lived somewhere else, or that other people have lived here over the years. Like I'm hearing things from other dimensions or past times. It may be odd to say, and I'm okay with being completely wrong, but it's as if the memories of these walls are speaking at night. The word is that the building I live in used to be a bed and breakfast, so this place definitely has some stories and has seen a lot of different faces in its day. It would make sense that I would be hearing different voices every time, but... It's really interesting to me. I am very interested in learning about what it is I'm experiencing, so if you have any ideas, let me know. In June of 2007, I was at the hospital at 1 in the morning because my friend got his fingers caught in a taxi door, and one was visibly broken. The wait in the emergency room was long, and the vending machine didn't have any coke. The receptionist told me that there was another machine in the next building, which was always stocked because it's not as busy. The receptionist gave me the directions, and I exited the A&E department walked down two long corridors and an enclosed bridge which connected the two buildings and got to the other end. When I got to the other end of the bridge and opened the double doors, I was back at the emergency room entrance, which was impossible because I would have had to double back on myself and to add it was probably six minutes of walking. I've never been able to explain this. Everyone I've ever told has said that I must have been drunk or tired. Sure, I might have been tired, but I was not drunk because I was driving. I wish I could have found a way to get a CCTV of that night. I still can't really explain it, other than a glitch. So, I'm a skeptic, and I don't really believe in anything supernatural. But today I had a weird experience I can't explain. I have a galley-style kitchen. I was washing dishes, and my phone was on the counter behind me. I was listening to some Mr. Revenant stories. I turned around from the sink to grab another container to wash, and noticed that my phone had gone from the video to the comments section of the video, I looked closer and noticed that it was queued up to reply to a comment. A message was already written in, but hadn't been sent. 
It said, I am in danger, all lowercase. My phone automatically autocorrects I'm lowercase to I'm with an uppercase. So I was really confused. It's possible, maybe, that a water droplet from my dish gloves flung onto the phone when I reached it, but I don't think it could type a whole message. After I checked on my husband, I called my mom and texted my brother. Everyone was fine. About a half hour later, when I went back to the kitchen, I was momentarily overcome with nausea and felt sweaty, but it passed after a few minutes. I have no idea what that was. I didn't feel like I was the one in danger. Maybe just a strange, unexplainable glitch and the nausea was unrelated? Or it was a message from someone, but I can't think of who it would be. I scanned my phone for viruses and malware and I didn't find any. I don't know anyone personally who would want to hack my phone. I'm basically a hermit. I have agoraphobia and I work out of my house. I haven't received any weird texts and I don't have any apps that I didn't download myself. It's still possible, I guess, but it doesn't look like my phone was hacked and I don't have any other explanation. Something happened to me yesterday and I still can't process it. It's driving me crazy. I always come home at 11 p.m. after going out with my friends. Before I forget to mention, I live alone in a quiet neighborhood next to a park. Yesterday, before I went home, I was taking a walk, listening to some music in the park. There were a few people there and there were several people in front of me. As I'm walking, suddenly everything paused for four minutes. I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought it was some kind of prank, but when I turned, nobody was moving, even flinching. And it was so cold. It gave me a really creepy vibe. It's like I was in a different universe, or something glitched in the matrix. My phone wasn't working, and neither was my watch. Then everything went normal again. I have no idea what happened. I tried to talk to a friend, but he didn't believe me. I mean, why would I even lie about something that sounds so crazy? Is there any explanation for this? Once a week for the past two years, I've walked to and from a supermarket. On the way, I walk down a long road which has houses on one side and a whole lot of nothing on the other, except for the remains of a little store that sold newspapers and daily essentials. For the past two years, I've passed these remains and recalled the time around six years ago that my friend and I were passing the store but we had to take shelter there when the heavens suddenly opened and a heavy storm started. It made me feel a little melancholic to look at the remains, thinking of happier times and so on. What used to be a store that happily served its local community was now barely three partially knocked down walls and a pile of rubble. Last week, it was the three walls and a pile of rubble. Today, to my utter astonishment, it's the same store as it was six years ago. I couldn't really say what it looked like in between then and the past two years as I only moved back to the area two years ago. Kind of run down and old looking, but certainly not a pile of rubble. I can't be sure, but I believe it's the same two old men running it who called my friend and I a cab that day when we were caught in a storm. Three weeks ago rubble, today just like it was years ago? I'm pretty sure this is some kind of glitch in the matrix but it's my first experience since childhood that I would describe as supernatural. Supernatural. 